I really just I love the novelty of the character because it's so specific, like trophy <laughs> wife. And it's like so people are like, what does a tro- like what what does it mean? What's a yeah. trophy wife? And I'm like, mm-hmm. I don't even know, but I'll just act as if how yes. I define a trophy wife to be. Uh-huh. And people just like went with it. But then when I think of a trophy wife, because other people are like, oh, um, trophy wives are just, you know, parang stay-at-home moms. And I mm. mean, there's nothing wrong with that. But I feel like the whole idea of a trophy wife is just someone that you would want to flex to people. <laughs> I'm Trey Ramulia, and this is the White Stripe Podcast. All right, so for today, I am with actress now tiktoker trophy wife future trophy wife <laughs> uh rain machienzo thanks for coming back on rain oh my goodness i really love this podcast trey asks the best questions <laughs> <laughs> i remember when we did the first one i was so interested with your story and at the time you were still studying and i was just like you know what like this girl seems interesting um i'm gonna send a dm and see if she replies and then you you were like you were so gracious about it and you just answered everything that I asked you. And then I did not like I did believe in like your drive to do things, right? And your consistency. But I'll be honest, I never thought that you'd get to this point so quickly. Did you feel like you'd be here like a few years ago? Actually, no. Well, during the time that I hopped on your podcast, obviously it was one of the goals that I had in mind. But then uh-huh. there was no specific timeline because obviously you were still when you were... Kanye girl, like people knew yeah. you as Kanye girl. Yeah. Yeah, I was in like I was deep in being Kanye girl during that time. <laughs> but um, yeah, it, it was just a goal. But um, I think it was. How do I say this? For me, it wasn't an impossible goal. It was already okay. where I saw myself going. But. Yeah, as for the timeline, I didn't really expect things to happen this quickly. Uh-huh. Yeah, it was it's so overwhelming. <laughs> <laughs> no, I find it so interesting because I and I, I have to ask you about this eventually, and I'll get into your trophy wife stuff later. Um, <laughs> but when you first came on, it was November of 2020. And that that feels so long ago now at this point. Mm-hmm. It's now at the recording, it's February of 2022. So it's been a while since you've been on the podcast and you've just mm-hmm. blown up in a different way, whether it's online, whether it's um, social media, and you, were, you, you got signed. Among everything that's happened in the past, let's say, couple of years, what's the biggest move or change in your life? Well, definitely signing with my uh-huh. management. So I'm now with a network and there are a lot of changes because during that time that we hopped on the podcast, well, I mm-hmm. first hopped on the podcast, it was more of um, social media pala. Right, yeah. But then w- I-, I didn't really know what I was getting myself into when I signed with crazy. GMA. So um, obviously, they, they, they do a really good job at managing me and just really like uh, um, improving my brand and um, uh-huh. looking for more opportunities for me. I just didn't expect it to happen so quickly. So I guess, yeah, I could consider signing with them as that big step that really like just pushed me towards media right. yeah it's crazy though that i mean other than everything happening in your, in your life career-wise how are you though how how is how is rain the person not, not the TikToker, wow. not the actress how, how are you how is rain <laughs> uh, i'm doing well um uh-huh. i think for the most part of 2021 the consistent feeling that i had was just me being very overwhelmed like I did a couple of my first few tv shows and I remember when I did the prayer and fasting um yeah at the beginning of the year in 2021 uh-huh. a lot of the uh, it's all f- of course by God's grace that I was able to accomplish a lot of the goals that I was praying for my faith yeah. goals um just being able to host with Unang Hear It mm. such a dream come true and then I got um I got a role in a series. Right. I didn't know that it would all happen in 2021 and then of course adding adding the pressure of trying to graduate because that yeah. semester that I was trying I was trying so hard to graduate. <laughs> that's when I got signed. And obviously when you get signed it's like they will throw work your way. Yes. So it was uh it was just very overwhelming. I would say that right now how I am I am coping well. <laughs> <laughs> there is a certain line and you're hitting the line. Like, is that right? Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, it's like mm, okay, just enough. I'm okay. <laughs> <laughs> I have to ask you about Trophy Wife. Is is Trophy Wife and Kanye girl the same person? Like, did she grow up to be Trophy Wife, or is she a different person altogether? Well, I'm leaving it up to people. However, <laughs> they perceive the character. If they think it's Kanye girl growing up, then by all means, think about it that way. But honestly, um, I did not know that this would happen when I did that video. Like, I mean, as per usual with, you know, me and content creation, because uh-huh. I feel like last year I took a back seat in terms of, you know, doing skits and POVs. And um, yeah, it's just, I just wanted to rant on social media, period, that I wanted yeah. to be a trophy wife. And then for some reason, at like that same evening, I thought, hmm, I, 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 I showered, I was doing my skincare. Yeah, and I was yeah. Like, huh, this kind of seems like a very trophy wife scenario. Mm-hmm. And then I filmed the video like that right then and there. I thought about, okay, what's, what's a rich sounding name of a son? I'm like, uh-huh. Inigo. Yeah. Oh and then, <laughs> yeah. And then it was received well. So, yeah, I just kept, uh-huh. kept the videos coming. But, um, I never really thought about it in such a way that, okay, I need to make Kanye girl grow up into a new character. People just made that connection. Actually, when people yeah, yeah. made that connection, that was only the time I realized it and I was telling my mom about it. And my mom's like, yeah, that's actually true. It's very possible. And I'm like, perfect. <laughs> I'm still on brand. <laughs> no, it's so funny because I remember you, it was initially like your tweets, right? About Trophy Wife stuff. Um, I think it was you or... You posted like just little snippets of like trophy wife things. Yeah, there was a yeah, there was one video I remember clearly that I posted because I uh-huh. was so stressed with school. And then um I, I met a new friend and then my friend was asking me, So what's your like goal in the next five years? I'm like, I don't know, be a trophy wife. <laughs> and then I posted that specific rant on TikTok, but that was like mid-2021. I never intended yeah, yeah. for it to be a POV. But it's crazy because it's a it's a universe now. Um, yeah. I there was one day I went on TikTok and like I've been following you right for the past couple of years. But the there was one time a couple of weeks ago I went on TikTok and like every other or every third video was part of your multiverse. And I was just <laughs> like, you know, I was like, you know what? Like this is crazy. How yeah. you have you. Um, can you like bring me through who are the characters in, in your actually, universe? Do you know? Actually, at this point, um, <laughs> I actually do not know anymore. But so um, I guess there are no specific characters. It's literally just like me. And then I remember um, the whole character of the husband. Mm. How it came to be was um. Uh, I, I think I commented on one of my videos because a lot of people were saying, oh, I want to be an ego. I want to be your child. Right, and right. me being myself, I'm like, why is everyone volunteering to be the child? Does no one want to volunteer right, to be like yeah. the husband? I did see that comment of yours. Yeah. Yeah. And it was super like out of the blue. Um, that guy, I, I, I've known him for a while, but we're not like in constant communication. Landon yeah. yeah. messages and says, um, I think hi or something. And then I was Mm. like, "Mm, claimed. And then (laughs) I think a couple people who saw that comment tagged me in this video. And I'm like, Mm -hmm. you know what? This is actually like something that I could twist and make into like part part of my storyline. But then obviously I don't want to pressure creators to like, you know, come be part of like this cast because the joy and the beauty of it for me is how spontaneous things are. Yeah. But for some reason, I really appreciate him because the punchlines are just on <laughs> fire. So good. So yeah, but as for all the other characters, um, no, none of those are planned. I don't create videos specifically for yeah, them. Yeah. It's still like just the daily life of a trophy wife. I do create videos that um, the uh, Landon could do it. But um, yeah, yeah. Nothing about this is planned. I'm overwhelmed. <laughs> I think you should be in a in the best way. Um, it's funny. I went through TikTok earlier, and I saw again a few of the videos. It's you. 
as trophy wife and you have your husband. And then there were like three or four different people who were in Ego. Um, yeah, yeah. Right? And then there was people who was in Ego's friend. Uh, mm-hmm. when you when you told them that you're gonna take a picture with Inigo's friend like there it's everywhere there's like two I saw three of the Yaya that was taking care of uh-huh. um, there's a lot mm-hmm. and then there was there was another one of like um, your husband's like business partner that's a girl and she's like a single CEO type it's so weird and I know from where it started and I know it started with you and just the simple idea and you didn't mean for any of this to happen but yeah. the fact that you did create something and it just spiraled into more things, to me, that's that's crazy and that's inspiring to see that. And I'm just like, that's I want that, like to just create something that people love and people continue, even though you're not posting anymore. Like, it's crazy how they use your sound and just put it over different things again and again and yeah. again. How do you feel about that? Um, I'm definitely pressured and overwhelmed. Uh-huh. It's like, okay, um, I want to strike while the iron is hot, but also I don't want to overwhelm people with like posting a lot and trying yeah. to build up the story. For me, honestly, I don't want and I never intended to create like a full blown storyline right. yeah. where, um, where th- th- like, you know, like when there's a plot for a story, there's a timeline you're following. Uh-huh. I didn't want that. But yeah, yeah, yeah. How I ideated it, it's more of like a sitcom where you exactly. watch one episode, it's a standalone episode. Yes. So yeah, for me, it was more like a sitcom rather than a series. So it's very overwhelming. Um, For the past couple of days, I was very like busy with work and there are other things right. that I have to obviously do because I'm committed here. Like, yes. <laughs> that was very unexpected. So um, I've been taking the past few days to like recuperate and just like, jot down more ideas because obviously I realized that oh this is something people enjoy yeah. and I really just I love the novelty of the character because it's so specific like trophy <laughs> wife it's like so people are like what does a trophy like what what does it mean what's a yeah. trophy wife and I'm like mm-hmm. I don't even know but I'll just act as if how yes. I design a trophy wife to be uh-huh. and people just like went with it so um I'm just enjoying the whole creation as I go through the through the days, through the weeks. Because how because Kanye Girl is a little bit like not even mean, but like, you know, she she <laughs> has those snide remarks. Yes, has, yes, for sure. Yeah. For sure. Yeah, and a lot of the comments that I used to get before were like, Oh, your character's so annoying, but I can't stop watching. Yes, yeah, but yeah. Now, yeah, yeah. now it's like a character that people love. And I wanted to maintain that positive image of like a family woman like a good christian good christian woman if you will yeah 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 no but it's so So, funny because you know there are people like that you're not creating something out of thin air there is some basis on that is that like a mixture of just like things that you think people are like um where did it start okay Funny story, uh-huh. me and my mom, we would always talk about like becoming a trophy wife mm-hmm. because my mom always says, now nah, my dad trophied her because like my mom, uh, she's very confident. Eh? My okay. mom's like, yeah. But then when I think of a trophy wife, because other people are like, oh, um, trophy wives, you're just, you know, parang, uh, like stay at home moms. And mm. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that, but I feel like the whole idea of a trophy wife is just someone that you would want to flex to people because <laughs> my mom <laughs> yeah yeah but my mm-hmm. mom and her sisters my mom and her sisters are just very like very funny they're very like yeah. titas of titas of manila mm-hmm. so they always talk about how their husbands trophied them because right. they come from good schools right. their family backgrounds good um mm-hmm. they're very like um what do you call this they're very like they they dress up well. They yeah. show up nice, and then they they're stage moms. So oh my all those personalities. Okay, okay. Yeah, I have yeah. four titas, and I have an uncle. So they're like four sisters and a wedding. It's like right. that. <laughs> so just all of their personalities, I kind of mesh it, and then mm. from there, I also try to look at like so heart evangelista. Kind yeah. of that vibe. Right, right. Yeah, I but, get that. Yeah, it's it's a good blend. It's a good blend of like. 
you know, different kinds of wives that husbands would just want to flex. <laughs> and you just have this thing where, again, it's part of the confidence, right? And it's the whole idea of the trophy wife and everything. Because you're not just a trophy wife, you're like a rich trophy wife <laughs> that <laughs> you created a world and you didn't even know it. And it's wild yeah. to think about it. Mm -hmm. I didn't really, oh man, I didn't think of it as a world in the first place. I just really wanted to create POVs and just like yeah. different kinds yeah. of moms. Because it's funny, eh? like when you see moms like in school, like I, yeah, love yeah, yeah. To, right? I love talking to titas as well. So it's just fun. It's like a little bit of her personality is like your mom. And then a little bit of yeah. her personality is your tita naman or like your friend's mom. So it's just like, oh, it's just a good um a good blend of everything you've seen through your life that's true though okay so but so for you personally are you kind of happy that you're not konya girl anymore because i tried googling your name recently um before the show and like konya girl still comes up half the time is that something that you're staying away from now or is it something that you're like no no this is still a part of me this is still what i embrace or are you like no i'm evolving from that oh definitely yeah i would use the term evolving because um, when I when I like when I laid low with posting Kanye girl videos, like you you all, you have your time in the sun as um yeah. as any creator would you would have your time in the sun and I feel like to some extent Kanye girl already had her time in the sun and um I didn't want to continue pushing it and shoving it down people's throats because <laughs> even yeah. for me even for me it doesn't feel like the first time I was creating it, I was just like on fire with mm. all the ideas. Like my notes app is super long. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then when I started running out of ideas, I just felt the need to stop and mm -hmm. find new inspiration. And then I think it was 20, I was still doing a few POVs in 2021, early 2021. Mm -hmm. But then late 2021, I actually got hospitalized for like, oh. food poisoning. And then it was just funny because like, well, getting hospitalized wasn't funny, but then mm. um, when I was there, Konyo TikTok suddenly took a hit again. Oh, okay. And then I just wanted to like hop on it. But I've been praying about it for a couple of months already. I was like, yeah. do I continue doing this? Am I yeah. forcing things now? Is there some something else out there? Like, is this my new comfort zone that I didn't yeah. want to get out yeah. of? And I think just being in the hospital and not being able to hop on the trend was very humbling because it's like, mm. oh man, I'm Kanye girl and I'm not part of this <laughs> new like Kanye wave. My yeah, goodness. Yeah. Oh so, no, my um, brand. The yeah, 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 yeah. It was very humbling, but also um, I think entering show business helped me because I needed to grow out of that. And truthfully, since I graduated from college, there isn't much. In my environment that inspired me and like to do more on your girl videos mm. it just seemed so different so yeah, yeah, definitely. yeah i think one thing is definitely your environment right it's who mm -hmm. you surround yourself with and i completely get that because i think that if you still did Kanye girl videos it wouldn't be the same anymore um yeah. i think at least for me also because now i'm like what more than three years removed from school so yeah it doesn't feel as fresh as it used to um yeah and like again we ha a lot of us haven't had that ex those experiences in a while in terms of school like our yeah if you do go to school it's online so i think like it's a different yeah. wave now of when you create things i have a question about your showbiz though because i think you mentioned last time that you kind of wanted to get into showbiz but yeah. you didn't you didn't have anything real yet right you just had maybe a few calls here and there, but you had you didn't have anything real. What was it like when you got signed? How did you feel about that? Was it like a big moment? Were you nervous? Hmm. Hmm. That's interesting. Okay. Actually it was um it was more of a slow burn rather hmm. than a spectacle for me because uh -huh. I started, well I actually sent in my audition video for GMA. Like I just I just knew that this was where I wanted to be like mm -hmm. at, at, at least for this you know for the next few years of my life um 
I auditioned back in like June 2020 when I saw the ad on Facebook. And oh. I was like, you know what? I'm bored. I don't have anything going for me right now. And, and like school hasn't started. I sent in a video. And back then I looked so different. My hair uh-huh. was so short. Mm-hmm. And oh my goodness. Tanya Girl wasn't even, you know, birthed in the universe mm. then. Yeah. And then a couple of days, no, not a couple of days, a couple of months later, Kanye Girl happened. And then um, a couple of people saw my video and then they remembered, like the recruiters remembered that, oh yeah, she auditioned. Like let's yeah. let's have her part of this next cycle because I wasn't able to make the cutoff during the first cycle. Okay. So I think it was just like great timing that they saw that video. But then I think the time that I hopped on the podcast with you, I was already in process. Oh, in the process of okay. Okay, okay. Yeah. Okay. Like I was already talking to them, but obviously nothing's for sure yet. Mm. I was still evaluating a lot of different offers, for sure. which was honestly for sure. very nerve wracking because I wasn't signing with a management yet when I was doing Con New Girl. So I was basically running my own uh, platform, running yeah. my own like business, content creation business yes. while in school and doing internship and doing mm-hmm. thesis. So it was very overwhelming, but I really just, I, I was convinced then uh, like, GMA is where I want to be. Mm. So I waited for them. And I remember like they told me na they'll try to release results by December and it still right. hadn't come right. yet. And I was just like, Lord, is this even going to happen for me still? What if they're... And I was on their page a lot, just refreshing it from <laughs> every day. Checking like, oh, well, have they announced... Yeah, have they announced new names and I'm not part of it? So yeah, yeah it's just very nerve wracking. And then... Um, January was when I found out. January of last year was when I found out that they were officially signing me. And then, yeah, after that, I signed. So slow burn, but definitely still very surreal. Yeah. What did you do on your audition tape? Um, we had to just introduce ourselves and like do a little monologue. So I did the a monologue that I had remembered from like elementary or high school, I think. What and monologue then for, is this? Um, it's just this declamation piece. So when I was younger, oh, okay. I was a declaimer. <laughs> oh, I didn't know that. Okay. Yeah, that was that was my history. So yeah, <laughs> that's me. Cause yeah, and then um after that we did a couple more like screen tests and stuff. Well, of course via Zoom. And then yeah, basically monologues now. Was it all via Zoom? Yeah, most of my, not most, all of my auditions were by Zoom. Isn't that hard? It is. It definitely is. But also, um, it was a little bit less nerve-wracking for me that it was on Zoom rather than in oh, real yeah. life. Is it because, like, you know the environment around you? Yeah, yeah. That and also, like, I don't know, when I'm when I'm in a screen, I feel like, mm-hmm. okay, it's so oh. okay. It's okay. So it's feel... okay to um, make mistakes or whatever. Mm. I don't know, but in real life, it's just very nerve wracking to be around yeah. people. Cause I'm I'm not naturally an extrovert, so being around people is not where I thrive. That's why uh-huh. most of my videos like take a hit when I'm alone in my room, just thinking <laughs> about stuff. <laughs> so for you, did you just send in? You just sent it in. You didn't even like have a friend inside to like coach you through it or anything. You just did it. No, I just did it. Like, um, I mean, I would have loved to have a friend inside. Oh, or, yeah, you know, for sure. For, I mean, I'm not saying that, that's like people. a degrading thing. Like, I yeah, would love yeah. to have a friend inside. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but no. And, uh, oh, I know. I didn't, oh, but one of my, there was some someone I worked with from mm. when I was in Portside, when I was a Portside reporter. Um, there was someone I worked with who knew one of the recruiters. But then, of course, like, it's not, I think, yeah, I don't think it's, like, an official thing that, yeah, yeah. you know, they, they helped me get in. It still felt very much like, you know, I was doing it on my own. Right. <clears throat> Whether or not they put in a good word, thank you. <laughs> thank you so much <laughs> for giving me a job. <laughs> thank you so much for that. How many shows have you been a part of at this point? Um, I've done mostly guesting. So mm. like I've done guest hosting for um, Taste Buddies. I've done right, a couple of guest right. things for like game shows where I like became a judge or something. Mm-hmm. Um, mostly hosting. I did Uno Hear It a couple times before. Right. So they were getting me a lot, but then I got busy with pieces. Mm. And I think at that point, um, 
after after I graduated, I got I got booked for this show. Oh, okay. You graduated cum laude, right? Yeah. <laughs> Congratulations on that. Thank you so much. I was I again I was googling your name and that came up and I was just like, whoa, good for her. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Well, I mean, if you want to be a trophy, you gotta add some <laughs> shine to that. <laughs> I mean, it's not called a trophy life or nothing. <laughs> you're gonna tell Nigo. You're gonna be like, Nigo, you know what? Your mom, she was cum laude, so you have to study hard. Okay. You know what? Because uh, actually, the whole cum laude thing is just a um, slight, um, slight segue. Because my auntie. She graduated, so in their family, so my mom has like three sisters, so they're four, right? Um, yeah. My auntie, who I base a lot of the like concepts of, like not the way that she talks, but more of the concept of becoming a trophy wife. Mm. It's, it's, a, it's her because I remember she told me one time, she was like, oh, I'm the only cum laude pa lang in the family. I challenge <laughs> you, Rain. Because I was like, well, auntie, I'm cum laude standing. I think I was like, yeah, like yeah. second year or third year college at mm. this point. And she's like, huh, okay, if you become cum laude, I'll give you like a designer bag. And that's Ooh. the bag that I have in my videos. Oh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> the Balenciaga bag. Oh, <laughs> that's why. All right. Oh, yeah. that's so cool. That's that's so interesting. Is she still like that? How, how did she feel when you did get cum laude? She's very happy, like ve- extremely happy. Um, I think a lot of uh, my cousins and I were we're achievers, like especially in that mm. side of the family. So they're always happy, and we celebrate like these um, these milestones in our yeah. academic life. Is that something you really wanted, cum laude? Like you really, really studied for it, or is that more like you're just more naturally talented in academics? Um. I would say that I don't know. <laughs> I will sound super conceited. I'm like, yeah, it's just natural. <laughs> but um, I, uh, how I would describe it is the, the original goal was to be a magna cum laude. Forget summa cum laude. Okay. That's like, okay. oh okay. man, my life is just gonna revolve around academics. Yeah. But, I, I really tried to reach magna cum laude, but then when I entered UP, I thought to myself, I want to enjoy my college life and actually take on opportunities that could grow my CV mm-hmm. rather than just my academic standing. Yeah. So um, I also, because I know there's like this trend in school where, so teachers tell us what our standing is, what our possible grade could mm-hmm. be before mm-hmm. we enter finals so we can drop right. the class ever. But for me, I didn't really want to drop classes just so I could maintain a grade. Mm-hmm. So I really went through it. I've gotten grades that are super pasang awa. Right. So right. Yeah. I don't I don't know how to describe it. I feel like I just um I just did my best, I guess. <laughs> but I don't feel like I'm naturally um smart, you know. Uh-huh. Obviously, there were a lot of nights, a lot of sleepless nights, because I had to work and then study. Yeah. Yeah. I like how you said like you wanted magna cum laude, but cum laude is fine anyway. <laughs> yeah, it's just like, oh, fine, cum laude, I guess. Like, mm, fine, I, I, I guess I'll settle for cum laude. <laughs> no, but then, because even my grade wasn't, um, it, it, it was clutch cum laude, my grade. <laughs> ah. Yeah. I wanted, I actually wanted to be cum laude. Um, and I, not, like, I was almost there, mm-hmm. and then I failed one class, and it just wrecked everything. After, uh, I feel, after I feel that one class, though, I was just like, you know what? I'm going to enjoy college now. I can't get cum laude. And I did. Yeah. I enjoyed college. So it's a completely mm-hmm. different experience from, from what you had. Mm-hmm, that's true. But still, the bottom line is like enjoying college. Oh, yeah, for sure. For yeah. sure, for sure. And you had experiences that helped you grow into your actual career and not just letters and numbers on a paper yeah. you know what i mean because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. it's completely different it, and it just it changes and like you understand this now now that you're out of college you know that those grades they don't really mean anything in your work now like think about <laughs> it it doesn't mean anything it doesn't like mean anything <laughs> if anything what it got me was like maybe a shoot a, sh- a short news bit on yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Unang Hirit or Bente Cuatro Ares, like, she graduated cum laude, congrats! And then that was it. Like, they never asked for my transcript. Yeah. My, my transcript is still with UP. I haven't asked for it, my diploma. 
Because I was just like, oh yeah, I have to ask for that. Yeah. I forgot. <laughs> they don't email, don't they don't mail it to you right away? Well, there's like this clearance I have oh, to finish. Okay. But obviously okay. it's like when you're not pressured kasi, to submit it to anyone, yeah. it's like nah, next time na lang. <laughs> like, yeah, you're fine. There's a news article that said that I got it. Just 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 check that out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you don't need my grades. Sir. Mm, you don't believe me? Check GMA. <laughs> GMA said so. <laughs> Oh my goodness. All right, uh, we'll take a quick break and then it will be right back with Rain. So, go check us out on Instagram and Facebook. That is at White Stripe PH on Instagram and White Stripe Podcast on Facebook. Go check us out. And if you are listening on Spotify, hit follow. If you're listening on YouTube, please hit subscribe. Again, hit subscribe, hit follow, Spotify, Facebook. YouTube and Instagram. And follow me on Twitter at Trimulia. So you mentioned to me earlier that you're now in a bubble for work. Mm-hmm. Can you tell me what that's like? Are you allowed to tell me? Yeah, yeah, I can. <laughs> okay. I can. Um what's it like? It's very uh there's a lot of things that you have to go through and do mm. before you enter. But um for the most part, I think it's um I like it. I like being in the bubble because at least it situates me in the place of work and I get to focus on that. Yeah. Because I heard, well, obviously I haven't experienced it, but I heard from the other artists here that they want the old kind of taping, which obviously cannot be done right now with yeah. COVID. So usually they do it like Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, and then they just go to the location and then come home after. Right. And right. then just like when the series has to extend they just continue adding taping Mm. days or whatever but for me i actually like being here because i already kind of know how many days i'll be spending here to work and then when i go back home i know how to pivot in terms of like going back to and focusing on social media um Mm. yeah it's very it's an interesting experience during my first because this is already our second leg because we're almost done filming Mm. but during our first leg i was very overwhelmed because i came here i was alone and then i didn't know anyone it was yeah. my first show i didn't know the producers the um my my castmates right so and we only had like four weeks to get to know each other so it was um it was weird i don't know how to describe it but um uh-huh. i enjoyed it because it seems like we're at camp <laughs> or maybe it's just <laughs> me because i'm the youngest Cause I'm the youngest one here. Oh, okay. okay yeah, I'm the youngest okay. one here. Like I literally call um, some most of my cast cast castmates are like years ahead of me. So mm. I call some of them like Kuya and Ate. Right. Yeah. And then Tita. So uh, I it, for me it's like camp. <laughs> In what ways is it like camp? Um, just the way you get to know the people you're with. Ah, I feel like okay, because okay. you're in such close quarters, yeah. you can't help but like really get to know them and understand and understand them as people. Yeah. And for me, I always, I love observing people because I mean, that's the heart of me being a creator is I yeah. get to observe the people around me and translate that into my work. So I really appreciate it. But definitely during the first leg, there were a lot of things that um, overwhelmed me. Like I said, 2021 was just this like big year of me being overwhelmed. Because <laughs> when I entered, um, I didn't know anything. And it was my first show. It was my mm. first ever acting role ever. Mm. So I had to like memorize scripts. And I'm not the best at memorizing back then. Obviously, mm. now I've got in my groove. And then when I stepped into set, they're like, find your light, hit your marker. Mm. What does that mean? <laughs> what does it mean? Find your light. But now I understand, like, you know, these uh-huh. terms. And then they're like, um, check the breakdown. And I didn't know how to read a breakdown right. back then. So it's very overwhelming. But yeah, I learned a lot. I was able to go into sponge mode. So what what's that like since you were alone basically and you entered? Like, did you have someone that just helped guided you through it? Did you like ask everyone around you what certain things meant? Um, I think it was more hmm. I didn't really ask. 
Mm. I there were some people who definitely like approached me. They all knew that I'm the newest one oh, here. Okay. I'm fresh, fresh blood, fresh <laughs> meat. So um, I remember there was one time, and I really appreciate um, my director for this. So we have two directors, and one of the directors um came up to me after a scene because I was just not hitting my marker. I did not know how to do continuity with shots, like when you put your bag here. For one right. shot, and yeah, they do yeah, a reverse. Yeah. You have to do everything you did yes, again. And when you're right. so absorbed by the character, you just mm. don't remember. So yes. for me, it was it was I was super startled. And then there was the scene I couldn't get. There were a couple takes, and I was with, and I was with like um one of the few of the main characters, mm. and I was just so down. Like I remember they took a break from taking the scene, and then I was sitting down saying sorry to everyone, yeah. over apologizing. My director came up to me and said. I had tears up in my eyes oh. at this point. He's like, come, come here, come here. And I was yeah, yeah. scared. I thought he was right. going to scold me. And then he told me, don't over-apologize. Like, it's, you're new. You, mm. you, we expect you to not know these things. And it's fine. But the second time you go on a show, I just want your next directors, your next set of directors to tell me how you improve. So don't like pressure oh. yourself. Don't say sorry too much. And then he told me that I was hitting the acting. I think coming into this series, one of my biggest fears is discovering, maybe discovering that I'm not an actress. Oh, okay. But then he told me, he told me that um, no, you're hitting the acting right. It's just more of the technical stuff. And he gave me this book called Power of the Actor by Ivana Chubok. Oh, wow. and it just helped me get into yeah, it just helped me get into the role. So yeah, I really appreciate these people. And then of course my castmates are very generous. They're like, okay, this is how you find your light. And then sometimes when I step off the marker a little bit, because mm. for them it's second nature. Eh? Parang yeah. In their peripheral vision, they know what angle they have to like lean towards to yeah. fit into the frame. So but sometimes my co-actors would like pull me in. They'd be like, hey, come here. <laughs> During <laughs> this scene, or sometimes they would like. They would they they themselves would adjust now for me. Yeah. So I'm just very thankful because they're all so they're generous actors. Yeah. That's that's such an experience of I mean, it's nice to hear that they're helping you out. You know what I mean? I mm-hmm. feel like I would be so scared if I was in your spot. Yeah. Um especially if it's something that you want to do. You know what I mean? Like if it's something that yeah. you're just trying out and you're not sure if you want it or not, maybe you're like, oh, okay. Um you have a bit more room personally to fail but of course yeah. it's something that you want to be good at so it's nice the fact that you got that recognition from your director as well saying that you know like you're hitting the natural talent part you just need a few more technical things to get there how mm-hmm. what's the biggest thing that you've improved on since you started what do you think it is um hmm. well when i entered <laughs> when I entered this leg of the, uh, of lock in, I only had one taping day since. But I feel like I'm just more comfortable with the people I work okay. with, and with yeah. that because it's so important that like um, a lot of acting is just reacting, and mm. um, also you know putting putting seeds inside you know the not inside but putting seeds like so that you know those people are actually people that you can react to in a way that the script demands you to okay. react to them. Yeah, so yeah. at least for like, so Rian Ramos is my best friend in the show. Um, at least now I could feel, I feel more like her friend rather mm. than the first day we were filming. Like I just felt so distant and I yeah. was so awkward to, you know, like slap her. Cause my character is very like, um, very uh, kalog. Oof. She's very, okay, she's, okay, yeah, okay. she's very me. Um, but of course, like, of course, you don't just hit your co-actors in the scene. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I remember um, the scene I did a couple of days ago. Yeah, I just felt free- freer. I felt more free to explore the character the way I study the character because I have yeah. a tendency to just be so invested in the script and that's not how an actor should be. Like, you should bring life to these words rather than these words holding you down. Yeah. I find it really interesting that you're now talking about acting when, like, a year and a couple months ago, <laughs> it was, hey, I made this girl on TikTok and she's Konyo. <laughs> Some of yeah, my friends yeah. saw that. 
and to see the evolution that you've taken on in the past few years, it's it was so nice for me to watch on social media, to be honest with you. Because um, every time that you had a big thing happen, I was just like, oh, I had her on my podcast. I had her on my podcast. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it was just like, it was that feeling of pride that I had. Or I'm just like, thank you. I'm just like, you know what? Like, because I, because I titled your episode, um, like, tic- calling your TikTok something else. And then how she's, and her career beyond TikTok, right? And like, you actually did it. And I'm just like, yo, that's cool, man. That's cool. <laughs> thank you so much. Wow. It's super unexpected as well, because these are things that you cannot necessarily plan it. Like, I mean, I cannot dictate whether or not GMA was going to sign me. Yeah. I could not dictate whether or not I was going to book a show or do mm. a hosting. Usually these things happen overnight. And it's just like, oh, oh wow, I have this role now. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> That's crazy. How do you think you've grown as a person in the, in the last few years? Oh, man. Um, I feel like that's why I feel distant from Kanye Girl because I just feel like there were a lot of aspects in my life that I had to deal with in a more professional manner mm. because this is my job. Like, when I was Kanye Girl, it was more of me just enjoying it. Like, yeah, I'll post whatever. I mean, because yeah. I, I had a fallback. Like, okay, if this video flops or if this... um if this uh, series ha- f- uh, sees its end, like mm. the Konyo TikTok series sees its end, yeah. I, I can just go back to being a regular student. Mm. That was me yeah. back then. But then now, it's literally like, okay, how do I get into a place of creativity so that I could continue posting online and creating, doing what I love, while also um, finding opportunities to grow myself. So I think a lot of... Um, you know, a lot of serious stuff that I had to reflect on since then. And um, I don't really see myself as someone who um, who grew. Obviously, there are still a lot of... Well, obviously, I've grown. But there are still mm. a lot of struggles I've had when I started creating that I still have now. That, you know, I think will take a while for me to grow out of. Like, for instance... I, I'm not going to lie. Sometimes I still care about, well, not sometimes. I often still care about like, okay, did this video um, take a hit? And oh, okay. if not, I get hurt. It's like, mm. oh my mm. God, I'm leaving social media. <laughs> but it's more of like, <laughs> but it's more of like growing in terms of um, increasing the fight that I have in me. Because when I entered here, it's, I don't have a school um, I don't have yeah. my college days to fall back into and just, you know, suddenly go back into a life of normalcy, I guess. Yeah. Now it's like I have to keep on, I have to be smarter. I have to keep on, um, keep both eyes and both ears just like on the lookout for mm-hmm. what I could create and um, incorporate in my platform. And of course, like, you know, with my acting career as well. What's... I hope that made sense. <laughs> no, no, yeah, yeah, no, I got that, I got that. It's you, yeah, it's, you went through a bunch of things. <laughs> no, because um, when you said that earlier, it's just something that I related to in a deep way, wherein mm-hmm. you're doing something, and when you're in school, or like when I was in school, I remember, because when I was in college, I did a lot of things on the side. Mm-hmm. Um, and I remember I would just be like, you know what? This is so cool because I'm doing a bunch of things on the side. And if I want to let it go, I can. Exactly. You know I mean? Yeah. Right? I, I don't, I can't, there's I can't. no specific word for it. Eh. Yeah. It, there's no, it grows you as a person. <laughs> yeah. Where like I, I can let go of this and no one will judge me because I'm just going to say, you know what? I'm going to focus on school. And everyone's going to be like, exactly. yeah, good job, Trey. Good job. Exactly. Uh, <laughs> but when you're out of it, what do you tell people? You know what I mean? It's mm-hmm. it's a weird mm-hmm. spot to be in, especially if it's connected to your job, right? For you, yeah. it's connected heavily to your job. For mm-hmm. me, this is not my, like, it's not how I make my money. I have other things that make my money. Um, but then I, I can't imagine the pressure also of, like, being paid to be, not like, yeah, you're being paid to be creative in a way. But at mm-hmm. the same time, you still have something to follow, which is like a script and a direction. Yeah. So is TikTok your outlet again? Um, hmm. I think TikTok is 
more of like it's where I get to be free in doing what I want creatively because I feel like when you say outlet it's more of just like doing all the things that I can't do in show yeah, business yeah, yeah. which is not true because I'm okay. doing a lot of the things that I want to do right. in show business but it's more of like um hmm, it's more of me rather than a character rather mm-hmm. than adhering to like let's say an image that I have to uphold for a certain show like let's say um the morning show I was doing when I hear it I have to be like upbeat and of course i have oh, to like yeah, for sure what what the show dictates me to talk about i have to talk about that which i enjoy it's my outlet as well to be expressive with um expressive with parang my jolly side yeah. but then tiktok is more of just me and my thoughts like trophy wife yeah. is just a thought i have in my head so right. you on a platform for my thoughts not an outlet naman because i don't like outlets on social media because i still mm. enjoy my privacy <laughs> Do you have any hosting, fail hosting stories? Fail hosting stories? I don't think so. Really? <laughs> I'm a great host. What are you talking about? <laughs> But like, okay, when you mean, when you mean fail, what mm. do you, what do you have in mind? Um, something that's embarrassing or something interesting went wrong. Mm-hmm. I don't think so. I don't think there was one glaring fail hosting, mm. but there were, well, not were, but there was just this one report that I had um, mm. when I was a courtside reporter. And up until today, when I remember this report, I cringe because okay. it's just so embarrassing. I feel like as a host, I'm more, I'm, I'm free cassette to just be expressive and like, observe the people around me comment based on that and like mm-hmm. whatever the crowd this energy bound like i just bounce off of it right. so it's easier to like ad lib and change things spontaneously but when i was reporting for court side obviously there was some there was an in like, a set of information i had to give to mm-hmm. the commentators to build the whole story and it's right. like it's high pressure it's very formal as well mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> there was this one report against BLSU. So my, oh my team, gosh. Adam, okay. so and I, we were yeah. against BLSU, and I my, don't my know team, why. By the way, my, my, I'm yeah, yeah, exactly. So how by fitting this story, right? <laughs> how fitting is this story? Yeah, um, we had this game, so I was already comfortable with reporting during mm. this time because I knew the players from my team. Mm. My fault was that I did not familiarize myself with the players from the other team. And I was, okay. um, I for, so I think I heard something from the dugout about like coach saying that we should, um, you should be on the lookout for this one player. Mm. And then I mentioned a different name because oh. I didn't, yeah, I didn't hear it right. Like a different player or just a different name? A different player from the team. Oh, okay. That I think did not even step on the court. <laughs> <laughs> It's just so embarrassing because like, So I was reporting, hmm. and then the commentators corrected me. Oh my god! <laughs> and they were like, "Actually, she meant." Yeah, I think it was something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. And I just wanted to sink to the ground. And oh man, I didn't do my homework enough. So I think that's one of my fail stories because live hosting is always uh, it's always fun, but uh, hmm. especially when you have to report, it's. <sighs> just forget about these details that are important pala. <laughs> Anything live is just such a rush. It's so different. Because like That's you and I are talking right now, but I know if I say something that just like could be taken out of context in a different way, I can just remove it. You know what exactly. I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, there's nothing that I've said. Don't worry about it. But like, <laughs> Or there's nothing you've said. But I can if I wanted to. If it's live, it's live. Yeah. It's like there you have and that it's option. there forever. Exactly. Especially now in social media. Especially now in social media. And effort, like, you know, I mean, live is just touch of a button. Mm-hmm. That's true. That's what it is. When do you finish your series? Um, I don't know when the series will finish airing, but we okay. end the filming at by the end of February. Okay. What do you do mm-hmm. after that? I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> We'll see. No one knows. Actually, um, I don't know. I feel like I've um, I've grown 
to just accept the fact that there is no sense of normalcy in this line of work. Mm. So I can't, like, I, I remember I was praying this morning. I was like, Lord, I cannot see past the, I mean, I can't see past tomorrow. Because, uh-huh. like, let's say I have a set of scenes tomorrow. It's yeah. so It could so easily be changed and it could so easily shift. Mm. So I'm like, I don't have this sense of, you know, like, and like how people with nine to fives feel that okay in yeah. the morning they get to build a routine. I don't have a routine, mm. and it's just I feel like I'm missing out on something. But it's something that I'm learning to accept and embrace. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, if I don't have plans for tomorrow, I don't have plans for <laughs> after this. Although um, I do have plans, but I don't know how well these plans mm. would like do or if yeah. they could actually be incorporated into my life. So we'll mm. see. How long are you in that bubble for the whole month? Yeah. Do you get lonely? Well, um, for I like I like my alone time for mm. one. I just like you know being able to um, be in this space and explore. And right. obviously, I I have TikTok, so I can brainstorm, film mm. it here. Um, there was a time I was lonely last the last lock in because mm. it was the first time. Now I could say like. I don't. I feel very differently than I okay. did when I first entered. But also, because last lock in, like there were a lot of things happening back home that mm. just made me feel lonely. Like my grandmother yeah, yeah. died, so oh, that was really yeah. sad for me because she was. She's like my number one fan, and oh. ever since she's just been like, "You're gonna be an artist, and yeah. it got into my head, and I did it. So I was very sad because I didn't even reach the funeral, and I decided also to not go home. So mm. a lot of a lot of crying, crying <laughs> during the first leg. That's a lot of grief that you had to go through because of that, huh? Mm-hmm. Yeah, a lot of grief. Um, it's hard, but uh, I don't know. I just feel like because I'm convinced that I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing, mm-hmm. it's been easier to deal with it. Yeah, I remember. Um, because because you mentioned that. And I can, I, I can, and I also can't imagine not being able to go to my grandparents' funeral. But the fact that she believed in you so much and you're doing what she told you to do, it's also so heartwarming because, you know what I mean? It's not just, yeah. I don't think she just said it to say it. it. Maybe she did see something in you. Maybe she was, you know, just poking something. And then you just, took it and you ran with it um so in a way you are doing what she's planted in you and that's amazing to see Mm -hmm. yeah and this was last year right yeah just last last year november Mm -hmm. yeah and this is during your first shoot yeah (laughs) that's a lot that's a lot that's a lot to go through it was a lot. It was a lot. Um, when I came back home, I <laughs> I remember just going back home and all my cousins because um, it was my grandmother in my dad's side. Mm. And I'm just like that ate figure of the family because mm. I'm the first I'm the first granddaughter. And okay. I don't know, I'm just like the kind of cousin who's always trying to engage everyone, reel mm. everyone in. So when I went home, they helped me process my grief. That's an uh, I think that's that, that's a good thing to hear, and that's so important for you to process it because going through stuff alone and you're going through your work and you're going through personal life and all of those issues, family stuff as well. That's uh, how so. How did you feel when that first leg was done? Hmm, interesting. I actually missed being in lock in because. Okay. I liked being busy, although I really enjoyed the holidays because, of course, there were a lot of things happening, yeah. and then I went on vacation, and then, you know, like the holidays, meeting friends. Um, after the first lock-in ended, I, I felt like, hmm, I actually miss these people that I worked with, and mm-hmm. um, because there were so many things going on through my head, like, I was here, but my mind was back home, Yeah, I just was super excited to go back this leg and mm. experience it all just enjoy the whole thing because yeah. i'm done feeling like such a newbie like i'm a yeah. baby thrown into the pool i'm over that so now it's more of like yeah i'm enjoying 
the people that I work with. I love having conversations with them during our downtime. I'm excited when my roommate arrives because I just love my roommate. We jive. Mm. And even back in the first leg when my grandmother died, she helped me a lot because... That's nice. Um, yeah, she's like a mom figure to me. So Aww. honestly, I'm just really blessed with a kind of first production I entered because the people yeah. that I am with are just... It's it's a joy to work with them. That's good. Do you get to hang out with your co-workers? Or is it like work then go to your room? Well, of course, during like during filming, like for instance, we film for an entire day. We get home, we're all super tired. So oh, okay. we all just like take the rest days as an actual day to rest. Mm-hmm. Maybe now we're still taking the rest days for ourselves, but then mm-hmm. last leg kasi I remember um there came it came to a point where rest days we would like hey let's all jog together or like hey let's have oh, okay. let's walk to um the beach or like let's all like have a conversation downstairs so I think it just it, we need to warm up to each other again <laughs> <laughs> no yeah I get that completely um sometimes you really you really need that to warm up to each other if you need any equipment for your podcast or for your live stream, do check out Wavecast Equipment PH on Facebook or at Wavecast PH on Instagram, W A V E C A S T P H. If you use the code word Stripe, you get 5% off for your first purchase. Anything, go for it. So message them, DM them, Wavecast Equipment. PH on Facebook and at Wavecast PH on Instagram for podcast and live streaming equipment. So go check that out. Fun fact for everyone listening, I asked Rain to come on like earlier in the recording. And then I was like, hey, are you free like next week or next next week? And then she was like, yeah, of course. Can we do it later? <laughs> I'm just like, <laughs> all right, let's do it later. How hectic is your schedule? Um, oh man, it depends. It really depends. No one can tell because I remember the last mm-hmm. lock-in. Um, there were some scenes that have had to be moved around. So I'm, as long as I'm here, I've put on a mindset that I've, I always have to be on my toes because apart mm-hmm. from the work I do here, um, my management sends me like, okay, you have to film this and then you have to submit this because I still mm-hmm. have like brands that I collaborate with. Right. So, um... I would say it's pretty hectic, not as hectic as my schedule was back in 2020 because 2020, mm. like Kanye Girl era, I was oh, like, yeah. okay, these are, the cool. videos, yeah, like, these are the videos I have to do, school, and then brands. So yeah, many yeah, things yeah, going yeah, on. Sure. But like, mm-hmm. but when I'm here, um, it's it's bearable. It's easier. Mm. So but even though there's have, a lot. You just don't have any control over it? Yeah, I don't have any control over it. That's interesting. Um, yeah, it's very interesting. But I, I, I really like this life because <laughs> it, it I, I like being on my toes. And I feel uh-huh. like there's no better there's no better time in my life than now to experience yeah. this. Because oh, I feel like true. in the next few years, For right? Sure. In the next few years, when you have to build a family, when you mm. have, you know, <laughs> when I become a trophy wife, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> Trophy wife, <laughs> trophy wife, na artista. Exactly. That's what it is. Spot on. That's what Spot it is. On. There needs to be more control, obviously, because mm. um, there's of course. there are other people yeah. there are other people involved in my life. But then yeah. now I'm just enjoying it as I go. I mean, obviously, I could have more. I do have some degree of control. Like I don't want to do this project, or I don't want to take oh, yeah, this. Oh yeah, for sure. I'm, for sure, for sure. Because I'm tired sure. from filming. But yeah. I think it's also like, I don't feel like I don't have control because my mindset coming into lock-in was like, oh, I, I, I will dedicate my time to this project. And if right. other things have like need to be done, I'll do it on the side when I have time. But the priority is to like study my script, be as present as I can. Okay. Can you tell me a bit about the show? Is there like a tease you can say? Are you allowed to say anything? Um, there are some teasers about it already, but it's okay. basically a le- it's a legal slash thriller drama based on the Article two four two hundred forty seven of the Penal Code. Oh. So I'll leave it to you guys to Google it. <laughs> Very interesting. It's 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 do some it's research. Drama. 
it's dramatic, y'all. But is um, it dramatic? I'm glad. Yeah, but my character is the like comic relief, so oh, okay. I enjoy doing my character. I get to have fun with her. Yeah. Um. Yeah, that's all I'm saying because it's it's airing soon, like Fab 14 is pretty soon, and oh, hopefully, yeah, soon. yeah I, I really like um. Well, maybe because I I come into this new opportunity with like I, like my eyes are just always so amazed mm. with everything I see. So I was like, "Wow, these shots are so nice!" And like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're yeah. acting so good. So <laughs> yeah, um, but actually, really, the shots are very like amazing, like thriller. Mm-hmm. Oh man, I hope I hope you guys um get to see it. How many episodes? I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not sure. Um, I, I can't gauge the episodes. I I didn't really um I didn't really count how many episodes mm. but i think um we'll be airing for like a couple weeks uh, a couple months then okay okay mm-hmm. i can't imagine what it must feel like to have a show coming up how, can you describe it like is it yeah how is it i actually don't know um <laughs> i haven't really thought about like how the public well sometimes i think about it like hmm, what would people think of my character but mm. it's more of like Like I said earlier, I'm there's that fear that I'm gonna watch myself and think, oh my gosh, my acting sucks. <laughs> mm. Have you had that so That's, far? I haven't really watched a lot of okay, okay. Because obviously when you film, it's like in this like yeah, studio yeah. camera. It right. doesn't get transferred to us or anything. You can't airdrop. But <laughs> no, no, no. But there are some scenes. There are some scenes where I'm like. Hmm, that was pretty good, but then mm. I guess because I watch myself, I'm very critical of myself. Yeah, for sure, for sure. So yeah, um, it's more of like anticipating and being nervous about that anticipation of how people, the public, will receive it, how my management will, um, receive it. Like, hmm, maybe yeah, that, this role is actually really good for her because yeah. I really wanted to be like the best friend of the main character because I know Philippine dramas usually the main character. If it's not a rom com, there's a there's a drama arc. And mm. for me, I just I when I got my feet wet in show business, I just really wanted to do light roles as much as possible. Yeah, so yeah. this was like a dream for me. I really listed it down. And when they when I met with my management, I really told them that oh, I want to do best friend roles. I feel like that's that so be nice. Really fun. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. I got it, and um, <laughs> yeah, I, I'm just scared now how they'll think. Hmm, No, <laughs> the public will say. The public will think. I don't know, eh. But yeah, I, I really hope. I mean, you're not. Magnari, mm, you can. Like, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Eh, because it's when it's something you want, you're just so on edge about, like, yeah, about. But but for you, parang bagay for you. That, that really? That, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> that caught like that relief, friend. That yeah. You're just cool it. Most yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's what I really wanted. So hopefully, when I watch myself, I don't cringe too much because honestly, I cannot <laughs> stomach to watch my my TikToks. There are some TikToks that I just cannot like. Especially, no, I can watch it on my own, but when I yes. watch it with other people, it's like, oh, stop watching me. <laughs> I I hate that feeling as well. Like I'll be honest. Like even if it's just right? this podcast, if someone like puts it on and I'm in the room. I'm just like, can you stop, please? Like, I, yeah, yeah. I, like, go ahead. I want the place, but like, can you not do it around me? Um, I don't know what about it. it. Just feels so awkward. Yeah, right. That's so awkward. So obviously, I'm pretty sure my family's ex- really excited about it. They'll mm. they'll watch it together. I just don't think I can watch it with them. <laughs> <laughs> You'll be like in your room. You'll be like, hey, yeah, you guys, you guys have fun. I'll watch this maybe like. In the replay on YouTube <laughs> at two in the morning. <laughs> two in the morning, everyone's asleep. <laughs> so it'll be available on YouTube, will it? I think so. I think so. Okay. Yeah. That's crazy. I can't believe that you did all of that. Oh, I have a question. Have you ever thought about doing your own podcast? I did. I, I mean, I do. I still think mm. about it. I have. Um, I already have a rough idea about it. I remember mm. when I had the idea to do a podcast. Um, because I would do TikTok lives, right? And then people yeah. would just like ask questions, and then obviously I would love answering. I love talking, um, but I didn't want to do a podcast that 
um, interviews people because number one, the reason why I didn't want to interview people is because the technical aspect is just, it's too much for me. What do you mean? <laughs> I don't know. Like, I don't know how to like make my guests audio sound good and then have to oh, record okay. over Zoom. Plus yeah. like, if I do a podcast, I don't want to do substantial... I, I'm so sorry, but I just I graduated from this course, but I don't oh, like yeah, editing. Oh yeah, right. I don't like editing you're videos. Right. I don't yeah, like yeah, editing yeah. audio. So <laughs> if I do a podcast, it's easy if it's just me in a controlled environment, yeah. and that's my audio. <laughs> mm. like, all right, I'll just edit this. Maybe take have it in one take. Just splice yeah. it up, yeah. cut to cut. That's yeah. That's how. But maybe if I learn how to do it more, I will incorporate it. But I think just to, with my personality as well. I want to create a podcast where I just like react to certain things that That's I see. That's fun though. That's fun too. Right? And it's just like, yeah. you know what? The other day I saw this blah, 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 blah. Like just commenting about daily life because I really enjoy this podcast of, um, well, there's two people in this podcast, but it's, mm. um, I don't know if you watch Cobra Kai, but I, I, I haven't. I haven't. It's, it's really good. There are two characters there. And I just really love their podcast. They're both like nerds. They talk about Ooh, different just like, you know, things they're interested in. And for some reason, even if I'm not interested in the stuff they're interested in, I still listen because no, yeah. how, how they comment on things is right. really, it's just fun. Like, mm, mm. this is what they think about it. So yeah, hopefully in that kind of format. I actually talked to Inka Magnaya about it oh, yeah. like when I had the idea. This was last year, pa, I called mm. her. And she also gave me, she, she gave me the green light to like go for that because yeah. I was very unsure because eh? most of the podcasts nga na I have hopped on are obviously interviews but um, she's like you know what you do these rants on TikToks why not do it in a podcast and you don't mm. have to pressure yourself to make it long and yes, yeah right. it, I want to do it sometime this year as like a passion project because a lot of the things that I am currently doing are like you know I mean showbiz it's income yeah. and then TikToks like um, a stream of income as well but there's no one platform that's just me creating for be- just because. Yeah. So I think you should. Be- I think you should. I think that'll be fun. I'll think about it after this. <laughs> after this. <laughs> uh, after acting. Maybe that could be my plan. <laughs> <laughs> End of February hits. You're like, you know what? You know what? I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna do it. I'm just gonna mm-hmm. do it. I think it's really interesting because, like anything else that you've done, I think you can just learn it. You say that yeah. the technical stuff. Although I do get, I do get what you mean because you studied it. You kind of don't want to do it because you spent four years of having to edit and having to do. All yeah, of it's things. like, I mean, if I had the choice, I really just don't want to learn it. <laughs> I don't want to learn how to edit. Like, if, I, I, if you have I, someone else who can edit for you, that's yeah, the dream. Yeah. That's I mean, the dream. I hope so, but you know, sometimes ignorance is bliss. <laughs> Oh my goodness. If you make one, I will listen in. I will, really? I will listen I in. Because like sometimes now when on my TikTok lives, because I don't uh-huh. add... See, here's the thing. I I can learn it, but I just choose not to. Like mm. I can add people on my TikTok live, but I just choose not to like learn it because la long, like it's just, I'm going to have to think about it. I already have enough things to think about. <laughs> So, so when I'm on my live, it's just mm. me talking and people sending yeah. comments. So <laughs> when they do that, it sounds like a podcast long, like me That's just true. reacting to everything they say. So people would always say, oh, do um, vlog na or make a podcast na. Um, I try to vlog. But like, honestly, I have so much footage. I mm. bought a camera. <laughs> I just have not edited a single one. <laughs> but I feel like vlogging is a bit different. Yeah, like, it's a bit I, different. I feel like it's heavy. There's a lot more editing. technical. Yeah, yeah, there's a lot more technical things to it. So if there's something that I will be learning, mm. even though I don't want to, I'll I'll st- you know if I had a, I had to choose, I'll force myself to learn one of the technical aspects of a podcast. Because I feel like vlogging also. I like vlogging, taking snippets of my day, my week, but I cannot mm. commit to it fully. Like mm. I always have my camera on and like asking people yeah. to say hi. For me, I, I'm not in that head. Maybe soon, but I, right now, at this very moment, podcasting seems to be more of like a, an option for me. I think so too, because like you can enjoy the moment and yeah. then just talk about it after. 
like that's what mm. I found with the podcast space. Mm, Which is like you can just yeah. do whatever, and then if, if something interesting happens, talk about it. You know exactly. what I mean? It's not mm-hmm. necessarily you filming everything and then because I, I mean like when I was younger, I made like fake vlogs and stuff, and I tried it, yeah. and it's, it was fun. You know what I mean? But yeah. it just gets tiring. Not to mm-hmm. say that this podcast isn't tiring; it is tiring sometimes. Yeah. Imagine like editing. I mean like. This is relatively short, some of my recordings. Um, some mm-hmm. recordings I have can go up to three hours, believe it or not. Oh, um, interesting. So I'm just like three hours, at, like, and I want to get it down to like an hour and a half or less. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so I'm just like, hmm, interesting stuff. Anyway, um, again, if you make a podcast, I'll listen. I'll check it out. Oh, my gosh. Thank you. It's just, uh, man, like, I, I did not know how much thought I need to put into like creating an, a cover for it or like creating oh, that, that, um... that's the fun part oh really it's yeah. stressing me out because <laughs> for example like I already did a cover and then uh-huh. today I'm uh-huh. like hmm kind of want to change it up a bit and then oh, I, no, I get you I create get you. a completely different cover so I just yeah. cannot commit to a single one but yeah we'll see we'll see you know it's my advice mm-hmm. just make one then release it you have no choice. That's it. That's what it is. Uh, okay, yeah. Just jump right into it. Just jump right into it. it. Because for both of my podcasts, that's exactly what I did. You make it, then mm-hmm. just jump into it. And then that's mm-hmm. it. That's, that's what you got. Um, yeah, cause you whenever don't have I try... much time to like keep it brewing in your head. Yeah, because when I try to... When I tried to like really make it perfect, I never ended up doing it. So mm, I needed to hear that. I really needed to mm. hear that. So yeah. go for it. If, you, <laughs> if it's what you really want to do. You yeah. know what I mean? Anyway, any last thoughts before I let you go? You have anything, any words of encouragement, any announcements, anything you want to say? Oh, yeah. I think I just want to express how important the breather I took from TikTok was in mm. creating this new character. Because it really took, I always mention this, like I had a content slump and at first I didn't want to accept it. But when the, when, (laughs) when it was happening, oh man, the thoughts I had in my head was like, do Mm. I leave TikTok, blah, 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 blah. But yeah, like I said earlier, um, creators have their time in the sun and um, it's really important to take that break because at least you get to, because when you create, your mind suddenly just goes into this, you know, headspace of creation. You ride on that momentum Mm -hmm. and you forget how important taking a backseat really is in terms of, you know, helping you continually produce content you love and you're happy about. So, Mm -hmm. yeah, I just, if there are people out there who are, you know, creating or who are experiencing content slump, creative slump, it's, it's very important to take that break because, it's helped me a lot. <laughs> mm-hmm. I'm glad to hear that because I, I've been on a break on this mm-hmm. podcast. So, oh, for real? So, so thank you for, um, kind of. It's like, it's like, a, like I had only one episode in January. You know what I mean? Like it, mm-hmm, it was, mm-hmm. um, cause I, I, I was just in the States. So yeah. while I was there, I recorded some, but I never like, I didn't get to like finish a lot of them. I didn't, um, mm-hmm. all of that stuff. But then, Hearing you say that now, it makes me feel better. I'm just like, you know what? Maybe I did the right thing by yeah. taking my time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I'm glad to hear that you, you're you not just one dimensional in terms of your content creation on TikTok. Because you could have just stayed the Kanye girl. You know what I mean? But yeah. you instead tried something new and one thing popped. Yeah. You never really <laughs> quite know. Yeah, you and never it, really know. It, you can't plan it there. You can't plan yeah. which content takes a hit which podcast will have, uh, you know, so many listens. So you just keep, you have to keep on creating. So for me, like when I let, not really let go, but when I distanced myself from the character, I just started being, going back to who I was, yeah. like ranting yeah. about becoming a trophy wife. <laughs> <laughs> and I think that's so important because so many people nowadays preach brand and they say yeah. that you have to stick to your brand. When yeah. If your brand becomes an inauthentic you, then I don't think you should continue doing it. That's true. And I mean, your brand 
is yourself. So yeah. you, and like, even in general, like brands, like brands that you actually like buy mm. and continually patronize, they evolve, they change through That's time. True. I mean, obviously there are brands that are timeless, but then there are still changes that happen and um, there definitely needs to be growth. And I feel like for people, especially for me, this was a hard pill to swallow. Like I did not know how to deal with the aftermath of Konya Girl because oh, I didn't want to be super branded to be Konya Girl because yeah. one, I entered showbiz and showbiz has a different, um, it's, it's a different audience. Oh, yeah. So I had sure. to, um, I, had, I really had to hands off so you think about it like how do I get my hands off this brand that helped me get to where I am now but that's also a little bit of like my personality it's really hard but you know you just when you get lost in let's say you have a you have a viral video this happened for a lot of people I know Mm. like when you get viral for a specific personality trait you hold on to it so much that you forget all the other things that build you that make you as a person so taking that step back helps you um, helps you reconnect with all these other personalities that you left behind when you embrace that one brand. When there's yeah. so many that build, that makes you as a person. So yeah. Yeah, you're right. You know what? We're all complicated human beings. And I think mm-hmm. that we can all relate to one another, especially if we're more authentic with who mm-hmm. we are and ourselves and not just focus on one specific trait. Sure, yeah. you can you know you can specialize in something specific, sure, but if you want to involve, go do it. And I think that's a great message that you have, especially mm-hmm. from your experience. You know what I mean? All right, Rain, thank you so much for coming on. Thanks, When's your Trey. Show coming out? Feb fourteen on GMA V Day. Yep, V Day baby. Actually, don't know what time specifically. <laughs> I have to find out. I have to find out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Because yeah. I, I'll be working that day, so I don't know. I hope I could watch the first episode. Mm. Um, but it's in the afternoon. Oh, okay. So like afternoon prime. So go check her out, Rain Matienzo on TikTok, Instagram. Your tw- your you have a Twitter, right? I think I've seen your I Twitter. do. It's just yeah. at Rain Matienzo. Everything's yeah. at Rain Matienzo. Check her out everywhere. And <laughs> if she gets a, if she has a podcast that comes out. Go check that out as well. Maybe thank you we so much. Know. You know what I mean? Thank you Rain, so thank much. Thank you so much for coming on. This was a kind of spontaneous recording. Very. And I'm glad that we did it. And I'm glad that you made your time for it. And mm-hmm. honestly, you have so much more to go in your career. So just, I want you to come back again eventually. I don't know when, right? We don't know we'll exactly see. when. But eventually, <laughs> it, you'll, you'll hit some, some, new, some new thing. And I'm just going to be like, you know what? I want to talk to her again about it. <laughs> <laughs> so many things are going on in my life. Don't worry. <laughs> All right, Rain. Thank you again so much. Mm-hmm. And if you want to hear more from her, go check out her previous episode on the White Tribe podcast. She is episode 12, I believe. And now we're on 60 something. So Oh, wow. That's thank crazy. So that's crazy. So go check her out there as well. If you want to hear her, earlier days talk about Konya girl go check out that episode um, <laughs> me as a me as a young, well i'm not a teenager but yeah me in college you and like college version of rain before this all the is, work. yeah this is me preparing myself to be true <laughs> <if I may. laughs> and then the oh, next man. episode Will you be the trophy wife already? Mm, Who knows? That's going to be real interesting. I don't know. (laughs) We'll find out. We'll see. We'll see. All right, Rain, thank you so much. And again, check her out everywhere. Check out her show on GMA on February 14th. In the afternoon. Thanks, Rain. Great convo as usual.